Seed Soup by Stuart J. Murphy, illustrated by Frank Remkiewicz. In Seaweed Soup, the math concept is presented in is matching sets, or one-to-one -one correspondence. Understanding sets is an important step in counting, understanding more than slash less than, and learning about patterns and relationships. One day, Turtle decided to make seaweed soup. He stirred and he stirred until it was perfect. Thick and green, gooey and slimy. Turtle couldn't wait to have lunch. He put four things on the table. A bright red cup for gooseberry juice, a great big spoon, a napkin, and one of his flat, nicest bowls. Turtle was just about to fill his bowl when along came his friend, Crab. Would you like to join me for lunch? asked Turtle. I just made a pot of seaweed soup. Yuck! thought Crab. It's green, it's slimy, and it's smelly. But how can I say no to a friend? Ah, uh, I guess so, said Crab. Take my place and I'll get another cup, spoon, napkin, and bowl for myself, said Turtle. He had three of the things he needed to make a complete set, but he couldn't find another cup. Well, this glass will just have to do, he said. Turtle came back to the table with a glass instead of a cup. Another big spoon, another napkin, and another nice bowl. He was about to pour the gooseberry juice when Sandpiper and Seagull came flapping along. There's a pot of something icky next to Turtle's table, piped Sandpiper. And it smells awful too, squawked Seagull. Hurry and fly away before he sees us. But Turtle spotted them and yelled out, Come and join us for lunch. Well, okay, said Piped Sandpiper. She and Seagull flew back and sat down. Turtle said, One of you can take my place and the other can sit right here while I look for two more complete sets of everything. Turtle looked all around. There was one glass left, but it didn't match. The only bowls left were cracked, and there was only one more big spoon. Well, these will have to do he said. After filling up the yellow cup and the jelly jar with gooseberry juice and the two cracked bowls with soup, Turtle finally sat down, but then Clam poked her head out of the sand. What's that smell? Disgusting, she thought, and started to dig back down. But Turtle hollered, Please have lunch with us, Clam. There's plenty of seaweed soup. Clam thought it would be mean to say no. I suppose I can, she gurgled. Take my place, said Turtle. He was looking for another set, but there was nothing left. Not a cup or a glass or even a jelly jar. Not a spoon, a napkin, or a bowl of any kind. While Turtle was gone, Crab said, I guess we better try the soup, but it's disgusting and slimy complained Sandpiper. And smelly and gooey, added Seagull. Clam just shut her eyes and took a little spoonful. Wow, it tastes great, she gurgled with surprise. Then Sandpiper tried it. Yummy, she piped. Delicious, squawked Seagull. Amazing, said Crab. They sipped and they slurped until the entire pot of seaweed soup was gone. Finally, Turtle came back to the table carrying a set of four things. A big seashell for a cup, a toy shovel for a spoon, a beach towel for a napkin, and a rusty old pail for a bowl. These will have to do, he said. Now let's eat the soup. His friends looked at one another. Nobody said a word. At last, Clam admitted. I'm sorry, Turtle, but when you were gone, we... It all the seaweed soup. Without a word, Turtle turned around and walked off. He's mad at us, whispered Seagull. What can we do? asked Crab. Soon Turtle came back. He was carrying another pot of soup. Thick and green, gooey and slimy, and just as smelly as the first one. And he said, 
You can never make too much seaweed soup. The end. We hope you enjoyed seaweed soup. This was brought to you by Jonathan and Miranda. Have a wonderful day.